Hey guys, Kylo here. A big part of my paramotor school, you could argue that it may be the most useful part of my paramotor school is my tow machine. I built this tow machine over three years ago and I went and got my certification as a certified tow operator. I've been doing it for years. I've got tons of experience with this thing. But when I built it, I built it from scratch. I had never seen a tow machine before. And I just kind of drew it up on a napkin and I, I, I designed it. I'm an amateur engineer. So, you know, I like to draw the blueprints, do things like this and, and just invent things. I'm, I'm, I mean, obviously I didn't invent the tow machine, but I, you know, I had a glimpse of one. I sort of YouTubed a little bit and, I, and I, most of the stuff I saw was like wakeboard towing. So I never actually got a good glimpse at a, like what they build and offer for sale out there in the world. So I designed and built my own tow machine. And because of that, there were some parts that have failed over the years. And it came down to the point where it was time to overhaul the tow machine. Now I didn't document the entire overhaul build or rebuild, whatever you call it, because I was in a time crunch. I was in between classes. I had some students that sort of, they got the toes, like the last few toes on the old design version one. And I had new students coming in and I had about a week to do the whole rebuild. So it takes a lot of time to video and document these type things. So I took some pictures, I set up some time lapses, and I'm just going to do some voiceovers and kind of explain what's going on. Again, I didn't I didn't video the entire fabrication process or the design process, but I did get some video of kind of when I was piecing it all back together so that I could share it with you now. And that's what this video is. This is kind of a hodgepodge tow machine overhaul rebuild video. I hope you enjoy it. raining. I've got the tow machine in pieces here. So um, I'm ready for final assembly, I think. Wrong. Let's put this thing together. I started with the engine. I made sure that the clutch and the variable speed transmission were maintenance. Everything was polished. There was a bit of rust on it, a bit of stickage on some parts. I've got it running properly at this point. Big part of the previous machine's failure was the braking system. I had a janky ass go-kart brake on there. It just barely slowed the spool and then it eventually quit working. What I've got here is like a 1960 something Ford master brake cylinder. This is a car brake. I fabricated this little bracket to mount it on and you'll see how it all works later in the video, but I got it on there. Cheap purchase from Amazon. When you're rebuilding something, you're taking it apart and putting it together so many times you lose count. You gotta put it together, sort of fab up where you want things. I had to put a bracket on here for the brake caliper, but first I had to get the rotor on there. So, uh, and this rotor fails. I'll show you that later in the video, but this is the footage that I got. So I figured I would share it with you. Just mock it up, put it on, take it off, on, off, on, off, on, off. It never ends. This is where I got it running and sort of measuring to see where I need to put the brake caliper. And Oh, look, I've already welded the bracket on there. So this was uh, like redesigned version one. I go through another couple of iterations of this, but overall it worked out good. Uh, I don't know where the brake caliper come from, some automobile. I've acquired some various chains over the years. This is a 35 roller chain. This is a 41 and this is a 40. If you look up close, you can see the size comparisons. I'm going to 40 roller chain because I've had some stretching issues with this 35 chain. It's a little more flimsy. This is beefier, bulkier. So I'm redesigning the drive system as well. I had some random pulleys in the shop. This is a 40, 41. That's a 35, that's a 35. This is the drive pulley and this is the spool pulley and you can see the gear ratio. This is what I was using. I've got a couple of options here coming. I'm gonna try some different gearing. I've got a different size drive. It's not in the mail yet, that'll show up. I've got a, ro a roll of that chain coming too. So I'm beefing up the drive system so that we can avoid that. In the meantime, I got to put together the control arm. The previous control arm that was on my tow machine was just half of an old push lawnmower handle. So it needed a full rebuild. This is a full custom. This is, I wanted one hand operation. That's important to me because usually I have a radio in one hand and I designed this so that I can operate the throttle and the brake. 
I made some special hardware, some uh, plastic nuts for the lever arm so that this will all go together. The nylon washers, when put in between two pieces of steel, cause it to slide so nicely and the motion is just smooth as butter, like a nice night. Now the little peg is what actuates the brake and I also use a very simple throttle, it just simple is better. This actuates the throttle on the motor. I know it looks kind of ghetto and there's all sorts of different ways you can do this, but I chose this to try it out and it worked great and it's worked for years, so I kept this simple little design. We got parts in the mail today, so we are going to open some parts and see what all we got. So, not my best video production, but we have a drive sprocket, some belts, some quick links for the chain, some various size sprockets, springs, idler pulleys, brake line, brake line flaring toolkit, and some bearings. There you go. Chopping list complete. It came time to do the first test. I had to plumb up the brake, so I, first I gotta put it all together, mount up the caliper, and now it's time to run the brake line, the plumbing. All right, so I've never put on a brake line before. This is the part that came with it. I'm just gonna guess that it goes on right here, and that's where we're gonna put it. So we got our copper washers, and our little brake line nut there. It's got a hole in it somewhere, right there. There's the hole. We're gonna see if this dude will fit in there. Feels tight. All right, we snugged up. Bending the brake line tubing was actually pretty simple. I got an idea off YouTube. You take a coat hanger and bend the coat hanger around to where you wanna bend the brake line and then you just match it with the brake line on the tool table and it just goes right on. Once you get the correct fittings and plug up all the right holes and get the plumbing right, ready to fill it up. So I've got me a brake bleeding setup going on here. Oh, something like I saw on the internet. We're gonna see if it works or not. But I got the brake line installed here, run down here. I've got it piped into this, this hard line right here. I'm just gonna zip tie all this to the frame once I'm done. And then it comes all the way back to the master cylinder here. And I've got all my connections tight. And I'm to the point now where it's about time to Add some brake fluid. Let's do it. I got some dot three right here. I'm gonna open up this little bit down here and we're gonna pump it. Thank you. And we have our first leak, so I'm gonna keep that full. Funky. It was time to do the initial testing. So I want to make sure that everything is turning right and stopping right. So that's the trick. And I gotta tell you, I had a failure. It worked once, it worked twice. But when I really revved it up and put the coals to the brake to see how good it was gonna work, it, it straight up, what happened was the rotor, I welded the rotor onto the hub and rotors don't weld so well. So look at this failure here. Boom, it, just, it snapped every weld, like six inches of weld. Just my mistake, just a classic metallurgy mistake. Yeah, this is a setback. The welds broke off the axle hub that I welded in there. That changes the whole ball game now. I gotta do some redesign. Stand by. So I redesigned a hub from scratch, some scrap I had laying around, and this one actually worked, but look at the wobble on this thing. Oh, I screwed up again. Time to take it apart. But the brake worked, the hub held. So that test was actually a success. I just needed to true it up so that it runs proper. For those of you that don't know, this is how a variable speed transmission works. It shifts gears like on an infinite scale. And the level winder, the level winder always gets a lot of love. People are just amazed that I came up with this thing. A small issue with the brake rotor. You can see where I've got the red paint. The thing was wobbling and it was wobbling so bad that I thought it was worth taking apart and fixing. Now, it was running and it works, but like I said earlier, I was I was being shady instead of a good proper machinist. You know, whether it's flying or whether it's machining, anytime you're trying to hurry up and get something done quick, you're gonna fuck it up. And that's just the nature of it. So don't hurry, do it right to begin with. I should have measured the concentricity 
of this part that I welded on here, but I didn't. And that transferred all the way out to the rotor and then into the caliper. And then it makes the whole machine shake. And I don't want that. I want it to run smooth and I'm gonna fix it. So let's fix it. Teaching myself how to be a machinist was one of the coolest things I've ever learned. I just really enjoy making things from scratch, getting them right, fixing them, building them, just all of it. All of it is so cool to me. So anyway, just enjoy this slow motion lathe footage, if you will. Now I think it actually is time for the final assembly. Man, I, again, I lost count on how many times I took it apart and put it together, but it was worth it. In the end, everything is running right. So yeah, this is what it looks like. It's got a lot of tension on the spool just as it sits. I like that, that way it doesn't backlash on you. And this is just a view of all the parts here. I suck at this. I fucking suck at this. Okay, let's start over, take two. I just filmed the whole shit on time lapse. Had no idea. I've got the line ready to go into the spool. I got it staked in the yard here and it's threaded through and spliced onto the fresh overhaul machine. I think it's gonna work good. We don't know. We're fishing to roll it up and see what happens. Y'all check this out. Oh yeah, say hi, Justin. Hi, Justin. All right, we are going hot. And after a little minor rigging, we got the thing spooled up proper. Ready for testing. Let's go test this thing and see if it works. That's where we're at. Got a new hand on board. This is P. He's the ladies man from a previous video. Mm -hmm. Drunk girls, Kylo and gumbo. Probably. I think you're in that one. He's my new tow monkey. We get him trained up proper. Tow trials, status update number one. We've got the machine geared too slowly. I put an extra gear on there on purpose, so I, I kind of foresaw this, but it gave me some options. I wanted to try it out to see how it worked. Because everything else is running so smooth, I'm gonna go ahead and gear it higher, and we're gonna give that a shot. Other than that, everything looks beautiful. We're gonna fix this dude up and make it work right. I'm, I'm gonna fix it so that I might leave this low gear on there. I don't know, we'll see. In a real windy situation, having that low gear may be a pretty cool option, but it is what it is. It's also hot AF out here. Everybody is about to die of a heat stroke if they don't stay well hydrated. We're not gonna break open the Michelob Ultra Loggers until later. That's for safety. We also have an additional tow machine here. Mr. Steve Hudnell brought his over from Monroe. This one's geared for hang gliders. I'm gonna tow him up on his hang glider when it gets good today. We're gonna see how that goes. So let's check it out. Big thanks to Justin Malone for being the test pilot on this little adventure. He's a previous graduate of the Kylo School of Paramotor from way back when I was just doing it per lesson. Justin picked it up nice, practiced hard, and now he is an established pilot in the PPG world. Thanks again, man. The return. Once you do a tow release and the drogue falls, you've got to pull the line back to where you start. I've got Preston, this was his big training day learning how to be the drogue monkey, going and getting it, how to pull it back. We just did a big training session tow trials this day. Everything was working right. There was a minor thing. I had a, I blew a bearing. Those pulleys that you see moving, I actually beefed those up with some bearings that were about five times bigger than what was in there. They should last forever now. And so concludes another day of making pilots at the Kylo School of Paramotor. A lot of fun. We had a good time today. The machine, I got almost all the kinks worked out. There was a couple of minor things with us. I had a bearing just blow out completely and seize up. I knew it was coming. I thought I could get through the day, but hey, it, I ran out of time and we had to do the test. But now I know that that's all that's left to do is to change out those bearings and we're going to be good. This thing's going to run like butter after this. What else can I say? I'm happy. I'm happy. We had several good flights, except for one that was a little sketchy, but it was just like sketch salad dressing. It wasn't a full sketch salad close. It's all right. He got better. We immediately made him do number two and number three, and each flight got proclet proclessively. What is proclessively? Each flight got progressively better, and I'm about to bring it to the house, and we're going to get done with this day. I'm tired. I've been out here all day. What's up, everybody? Call out. If you really like
like what I'm sending here on this channel, and only if you can, feel free to drop a couple bucks in my Patreon tip jar account. I've got some exclusive content over there, early releases. Hey, but if you can't, don't even sweat it. You're not missing that much. Much love, everybody. Kyle out.